JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 10th. I am Haral Ambospissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, we saw equity, equities uh, plunging uh, yesterday, but uh, the panic calmed during uh, the early Asian trading, uh, following some comments by uh, US President uh, Trump, uh, who will hold a news conference today. Now, as for uh, the rest of uh, the events, so we already got Norway CPIs uh, for February. We get Eurozone's final GDP and the employment change for the fourth quarter. The American Petroleum Institute crude oil report for last week. While tonight, New Zealand's electronic cart, cart retail sales are coming out. Australia's Westpac sentiment index, Australia's home loans, and we also have one speaker. But as it is always the case, let's start with the performance of the green bag against the other G10 currencies. So the dollar was found higher against most of the other G10 currencies uh, this morning. It gained against uh, the yen, the Swiss franc, SEC, NOC, and euro in that order, while it, uh, it underperformed versus uh, the New Zealand dollar and the Australian dollar. It was found virtually unchanged against the pound, the pound and the Canadian dollar. Now, the performance here in the FX world suggests that after the ugly opening yesterday, market panic calmed somewhat at some point. Why? We see the safe heavens uh, pulling back, we see uh, the risk linked Aussie and Kiwi strengthening, uh, the euro also was somewhat on the weak side. And turning our gaze to the equity sphere, we see that major EU and US indices collapsed to an average uh, around 8%, most of them, uh, with Wall Street uh, triggering trading halts uh, put in place in the wake of, um, of uh, 1987's Black Monday crash. The Dow fell a record of uh, 2,000 uh, points, while the S&P 500 extended its tumble to nearly 20% from its record high, with futures briefly breaching that threshold after the bell. Now, investors consider a 20% slide to signal the beginning of a bear market. I ironically, this happened on the 11th year anniversary of the prevailing uh, bull run. Uh, the big loser yesterday was Italy's uh, food CMIB. It declined 11.17% uh, as uh, the nation ordered people to avoid unnecessary movement and banned all public gatherings, a move suggesting that the outlook with regards to the coronavirus continues to darken. Now, the trigger behind the early panic uh, yesterday was Saudi Arabia's decision to hike its crude production and to cut its official selling price after Russia denied joining deep production cuts proposed by OPEC in order to stabilize the energy market that is hit by the economic effects of the coronavirus. After, after the opening yesterday, both Brent and WTI tumbled nearly 30% from their Friday closings. Having said all that, and as the FX uh, performance suggests, panic comes somewhat during the early Asian morning today. Let's go back to the uh, stock indices performance. You can see that Asian, uh, Asian equities traded in the green with Japan's uh, Nikkei and China's Shanghai Composite 
rebounding 0.85% and 1.82% respectively. Now, what uh, have calmed investors' nerves may have been an announcement uh, by U.S. President Donald Trump that he will hold a new conference today to reveal economic measures against uh, the coronavirus outbreak. On top of that, U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin said that uh, the White House is considering a meeting with uh, bank executives to discuss uh, more measures. Now, as for our view, though, it, uh, it has not changed despite the overnight rebound. We are reluctant to assume that the worst is uh, behind us and that the equity markets will recover all the virus-related losses. With the virus still spreading at a fast pace, infected cases returned to accel acceleration mode yesterday, and with no vaccine on the horizon, the economic uh, damage could deepen further and most probably drag into the second quarter. Even the rate cuts may not prove as effective as uh, many believe. With the fears that the virus is unlikely to be contained uh, soon, we see it hard for consumers and businesses opting for cheap loans and start spending. Thus, we believe that uh, we haven't hit the bottom yet. Equities and other, uh, and other risk-linked assets could well resume their slides, while safe havens may continue attracting flows. Now, as for the dollar. We would also treat its latest recovery as a corrective move. Lately, the U.S. currency has been driven by expectations with regards to the Fed's future course of action. Following last week's uh, double cut outside the scheduled gathering, market participants are now convinced that the committee will act again at next week's gathering. According to the CME Fed Watch tool, investors consider the case of a triple cut as a done deal, while they assign a 52% chance for U.S. rates to touch zero at the April meeting. So, with uh, the Fed uh, expected to act uh, much more aggressively than other major uh, central banks, the dollar is likely to resume its latest downtrend, especially against the euro, the central bank of which is anticipated to proceed with only a 10 basis points cut in the deposit rate when it meets on uh, Thursday. Other currencies against which we could exploit further dollar weakness are the traditional safe havens, the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc. We would avoid Aussie and Kiwi as these, uh, these risk-linked currencies tend to get beaten in periods of uh, market turb turbulence. And as we already noted, we don't believe that the worst is uh, behind us yet. Such losses may be larger if we choose as counterparts the yen and the franc. In other words, if uh, panic returns, Aussie yen, Aussie franc, Kiwi yen and Kiwi franc may be among the currency pairs that will fall the most. Now, as uh, for today, as for the rest of today's events, uh, during the early European morning, we already got Norway's CPIs for February. The headline rate tumbled to 0.9% year over year from 1.8%, while the core, the core rate slid to 2.1% year over year from 2.9%. With central banks worldwide easing their respective policies in order to prevent a global recession due to the effects of the coronavirus, a slump in Norwegian inflation may come as an extra reason for, no, for Norwegian policymakers to follow the footsteps of the RBA, the FOMC and the Bank of Canada, especially after the sharp tumble in oil prices yesterday. Now, from the Eurozone, we get uh, the final GDP print for the fourth quarter, which is expected to confirm its second estimate, namely that uh, uh, economic growth in the Euro area has slowed to 0.1% quarter over quarter from 0.3% in the third quarter. The bloc's employment change for the same quarter is also due to be released, and the forecast points to an acceleration to 0.3% from 0.1%. From the U.S., apart from U.S. President Trump's conference, we also get the American Petroleum Institute report on crude oil inventories for last week, but as it is always the case, no forecast is available. As for tonight, uh, during the Asian morning Wednesday, New Zealand's uh, electronic uh, cart retail sales for February are expected to have rebounded 0.3% uh, month over month, 
after sliding 0.1% in January. Australia's Westpac Consumer Sentiment Index for March and Home Loans for January are coming out as well. The Westpac Index is expected to have declined 0.4% after rising 2.3% in February, while there is no forecast for home loans. We also have one uh, speech tonight uh, from RBA Assistant Governor Guy DeBell. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great day and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you here again tomorrow. For those who are interested in learning uh, about the main events of the, week, of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye and have a great day. JFT, just fair and direct.